Hey, Cynthia. Hello, Barb. How are you doing? Really good. good. How are you today? I'm good. I'm really good. Thank you. Yeah. I'm so We're excited. Good. I'm so excited. I finished my MCAL. Oh my God, that is exciting. I haven't completely finished yet, but I'm working. I'm on the home stretch. Uh -huh. I uh, started pattern seven, the wicker stitch, a couple of days ago. Mm -hmm. And so now um, I feel like I'm on the home stretch. <laughs> and this time we tested both versions of the pattern to make sure that there weren't uh, there weren't any mistakes, any, there weren't any yeah. math errors. Yes. Sorry about that, everybody. And the last, that last pattern, that lace and diamonds was a little bit, uh, there were a few problems with it. We had to issue a redo and then another one. <laughs> and then, then to top everything off, we did the samples in the scarf size and we had that pattern down pat. Mm -hmm. But when we converted it to the shawl size, we were off. Well, when you converted, when, when people started to knit the shawl, and they, they, a couple of people wrote in and said, hey, um, I can't get this to work out. And I've redone it, you know, two or three times. And so or we're 12 very... times. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but man. You did, a, you did an update to it really quick, Cynthia, and you had it out there. Like the turnaround time was really, really quick. So hopefully yeah. a lot of people weren't, you know, frustrated for too too long yes so it's it's good to know we're all we're all humans we all um you know we are all doing the best we can and so thanks everybody for your patience while we get things sorted out but this time we did check the math on both the scarf and the wrap version so yes. good to go yeah and so the, some of the mistakes too were, were kind of small there were somewhere Instead of uh, slip the marker, we had place the marker, which, mm -hmm. you know, hopefully wasn't, you know, that's not something that'll catch people up as far as the pattern goes, right? Yes, and we, uh, in that, in that, in pattern number six, the one that gave us so much trouble, we, uh, we did leave an extra slip marker in there that, um, that wasn't, that was just kind of out of place. So, um, so you can ignore that uh, if you haven't already, uh, just cross it off. And um, of course now, today, we're gonna put out a whole new version of the pattern so that those things will be corrected and we'll have the reveal on uh, today's pattern, which is a really nice one, Barb. Yeah, and after a little bit of the complications of last week, it's kind of nice to have a pattern that goes back to kind of a regular rhythm. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, this one is kind of reminiscent of wicker baskets. It's kind of knit and purl stitches and they're offset from each other. Mm -hmm. So it's a nice relaxing knit and a nice way to end up the project. So here is, here's mine here. I'll show you the right side. This is it in the wrap. And it's just a nice, you know, just a nice kind of repeat of knits and pearls. And I really think this would look great in a sweater or in a cushion. It's a, a just a real nice pattern and a lot of fun to knit. Yeah, I like I love the color of yours as well. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I like this color too. Yeah, so here's here's my reveal. Yours? Oh, very nice. Now yours looks different than mine. I don't think so. You don't think so? No, nope, here, okay. hang on, I'll, I'll switch it so we're side by side. There we go. Okay. Yours looks very, um, like uh, your three rows of garter look the same size as the box. Well, maybe not, maybe not. I just thought mine looked a little bit more elongated. Yeah, so the, the stockinette stitches look longer than the garter stitch sections beside it, but yeah. um, I think ours look the same. And possibly when I when I block it too, maybe that'll make a difference. Yeah, so it, it does tend to kind of uh, squish in when you're knitting it, it does tend to kind of squish in this way. So when you block it, you'll pull it out this way and it'll become a little more... Right. Uh, Regular, but you know what else is really cool, Barb? Hmm. 
the back side. Oh, I know. Isn't that neat? Yeah, it looks like wavy lines. Yeah, I thought this was really cool. So I think you're right. I mean, I think this would make a great scarf pattern, right? Because you have these two sides of it, which is mm -hmm. kind of cool. Um, I've also, uh, I, I also saw, um, oh, it was something that Fiona showed me. It was like a cowl um, that was folded over. So you could have one pattern on one side of the cowl and a different pattern on the other side. So, you know, like if you took these patterns and put them into a cowl and, you know, this could be one side and that could be the other side. So you have this double thick cowl, but depending on, you know, what you're wearing and what you feel like, you could have a lacy version or a more geometric version. That's a great idea. And it would, this would make a really cool cushion cover. That too. Yeah. 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 Or a bed runner. Yeah. Yes. It, it's been a lot of fun, hasn't it? Really? It has. You know, the sections are not so big so that you get kind of bored at them. You know, when you've got about seven or nine inches, you're done. And um, yeah, you can move on to the next pattern. It's been a lot of fun. Yes. And so uh, once you've done pattern seven, you can decide if you want to, if you want to repeat the patterns or if you want to do an eighth section uh, with another one. Um, I think mine might not be, my scarf might not be uh, 72 inches long. I, I think I was ready to stop, but um, you know, you could, you could easily go on and make it as long as you want. That's right. And I think, Cynthia, on mine, I'd like to put mine at the end of my bed. So I'm going to just kind of see how long it needs to be. And I think I'm, I'm going to go back and do a couple more sections. Yeah, um, why not? Now that we've got all the errors worked out. Yes, that's right. And I think I'm going to make a pillow, too. I think I'm going to take two patterns and do one on each side so that I've got something to put on my bed. That'd be really nice. I think pillows are an excellent way to um, do a do a project that's you know it's nice in your bedroom, it's nice in your living room, it's nice out on the patio. Uh, you know you can you can use pillows and cushions everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So um, no, it's just the finishing, right? Yeah, just the finishing. Uh, I was just going to say though, um, are there any tips that you have for anybody in knitting the wicker stitch pattern? Um, hmm. well, it is, it's a bit of a repeat of eight stitches. So this would be one if you, if you wanted to put in, um, markers, uh, that would be, you know, this one is one that would work with markers and then be, be aware that just like midway through the pattern, uh, it changes, right? So you, you get going on those on those knits and, and pearls or knits and knits and then uh and then you have to change so that your your wicker pattern shows up so you know don't be startled uh i i was working along and i didn't have a picture so i it wasn't sure what to expect and and then the pattern changed and i thought i'd made a mistake so i backed it up and did it again uh, no okay and i backed it up and did it again and I, oh wait a minute uh maybe i should just carry on and see what happens, and and so the pattern changed. That's the thing with a mystery knit along, right? <laughs> you don't know what it's going to look like. So, at least we're giving people pictures so that they can figure out whether they're on track or not. That's right. And then the other the other tip I think is good because I have bound mine off. Um, is to make sure that your bind off is not too tight or too loose. You, you want it when you're binding off, you know, you want your bind off edge to accept a little bit of stretch. I want it to be square when I'm done. Um, so you want your bind off to have a little bit of elasticity in it, but not be wavy and not be gathered in because it's too tight. So you shouldn't feel a bone in there when you pull on it. It should, it should have some stretch to it. So I used Lucy Neatby's modified conventional bind off. Oh, and uh, added a link to her YouTube video for anybody who wants to learn how to do that. Because I think it's just a really nice way to bind off stitches, particularly if they're all knits, um, as this one is. That's a great idea. 
The other tip that I had is I hung a marker on my right side. Yes, yes. You know, you really need to double check and make sure that you're either on the right side or the wrong side because the pattern, every two rows, it changes, right? Yes. So there were a few times where I knit a wrong side on the right side row yes. and had to go back. But I think having that marker there is a really good uh, double check that you're on the right side. Very good point. Absolutely. Yeah, I did the same. Good. All right. So now um, we're on to blocking. Yeah, yeah. So, well, um, so Barb, do you weave in your ends before you block or do you block and then weave in your ends? I don't know. It depends. I think, you know, sometimes um, I do do that. I weave in them in first and then wash it. But I find that um, washing kind of sometimes brings those ends out again. So you're going to have to do it a second time if you do that. Uh, just you just can't help sometimes those little tails just kind of pop out and they need to be put back into place um, yeah yeah so uh, um, if you if you want to weave in your ends first go ahead if not you can block it first and uh, we've made some suggestions for blocking so um, mm -hmm. you can use blocking wires if you want to um, if you don't have blocking wires, uh, they are available on our website, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, we're selling the Lazadas flexible blocking wires, which are, are really easy to use. Um, I, and then I wanted to add to wanted to add, Cynthia, that those blocking wires come in different lengths. If you buy the mix set, you get a little bit of both. But I've uh, found that um, the scarf and the wrap are so long that somebody might want to get the long set so that you've got the very longest wires that can go through. Right, so I think in the long set, the wires are 72 inches long, mm -hmm. uh, which is about the length of the scarf or the wrap. Um, yeah, so you, you kind of can go end to end with that. If not, yeah. then you're kind of overlapping the wires as you go. Yeah. And uh, I think that deluxe set has a little bit of everything in it. It's got 10 of the long, uh, 10 of the short. So yeah, anyways, um, that's an, an option. And uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was the soak. You know, I feel like the soak is a really important uh, thing to talk about, mm -hmm. that you need to fill your sink with water and a little bit of no rinse wool wash. We like to use eucalyptus. Uh, but then pop your scarf or your wrap in there and let it soak for a good 30 or 45 minutes, would you say, Cynthia? Yeah, you, you want the water to penetrate into the core of the fiber so that, um, especially if you don't have blocking wires or you're going to block it without wires, you want the, you want the fiber to be saturated uh, so that the wool penetrates into the fiber itself. And of course, um, you, you need time for that. You need mm -hmm. to let it soak. Um, and then when you take it out, of course, you want to get all the water out of it. You want it to dry as quickly as possible. You don't want it to be sopping wet, but it's good for the water to penetrate it into the core of the fiber because that makes the fiber more malleable um, and suggestive to your, you know, yeah. blocking. And I think depending on the fiber that you're using, I mean, a lot of us are using Epic, which is a nice hardy wool. And so um, it's going to um, have a little bit more structure than, say, a merino or a superwash merino, where once it gets wet, it really kind of relaxes to the point where you could, you know, make it a lot bigger or a lot wider than uh, a wool one. Yeah. So, yeah. So uh, you may find that if you don't have blocking wires, you may find that uh, there are just some segments of the scarf that you want to pin out to, to give it, you know, to make the edges lay, lay straight. So some of those sections that involve cables or this one with the, with the wicker stitch where it likes to pull in, you may just need to pull it a little bit and put some pins along here to hold it in place while it's drying. So you you know if you don't have wires, don't don't fret. It's not going to be the end of. Uh, it's not going to make or break your project. You may just need a few pins, but do make sure that those pins are stainless steel. Yes. Um, because if they're not, and you pin out a wet project, 
then you may end up with rust spots in your that's right in your project. Um, there's a couple of really good videos too if anybody wants to uh, do a preview or a watch of how to block Cynthia you did that one with Diane on blocking the hot shawl so I included a link to that in the pattern and yeah. I think that's just a great one for people to watch because there's such a transformation of before and after that is so cool to see and I, I think we're gonna I'm gonna see this in my wrap too I believe I'm gonna get a lot more width out of my wrap than I have right now when it's on the needles yeah I, I agree I think when the when the wool is wet and you lay it out and even when you, you're patting it out you're you know adjusting it um, you'll find that it's uh, a lot more malleable and you can you know you can sort of even out some sections that where you're where, where maybe your row gauge wasn't perfect um, you know wash can really do a lot mm -hmm. to make something look better and then that that stretch you know as you're adjusting it and blocking it and, and pinning it to make the edges straight um, really helps the consistency of your stitches but right. also I think it's kind of fascinating people must think I'm really weird but I think it's really fascinating to watch wool dry because um, after you've washed your project, you take it out of the sink and you roll it up in a towel and you squish all the water out and everything just looks, sometimes it just looks like a wet cat. Yeah. <laughs> and then as it dries, the stitches get plumper and they get, you know, they get fluffier and things just look so much better after they've been washed and, and pinned out a little bit to, to dry. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, it just makes your work look so much better. Yeah. And you take it off the blocking board and it's nice and light and fluffy and airy. Uh, yeah, it just, um, washing just tends to plump the fibers up and make everything look better. Yes, yes, absolutely. So that's good. Yeah. So uh, this, this is the end of our, of our mystery knit along, Barb. Yes, yeah, it's kind of sad. Hey, I don't want to go. <laughs> <laughs> so we just have to start a new one. Yes. Well, we've got the crochet along that's coming next, right? Yes. So, yes, we'll do some announcements on uh, crochet along. So keep an eye on our newsletter to find out more information about that. And yeah, and if you haven't had a chance yet to publish a picture of your project, go to Instagram. We have a place there where you can put a picture up, and we'd sure love to see all your projects. That's right. So you're going to put it under your own Instagram post, but you're going to uh, add a hashtag uh, so that we can see it and they'll all be collected in one place on Instagram. Yes, yes. absolutely. You must do that. Mm -hmm. Thank you again for everyone who knit along. It was so much fun and uh, stay tuned for the next one. We'll keep doing these well, as long as we're under quarantine and uh, we need to get some together time. So this is it. Right? Right? Yes. All right. Take care, everybody. Thank you for joining us. We'll Bye see, you. see you next week. <laughs>